Fourth and final day of a reduced Ebo festival then here on Racing UK and we first race winner, well, could be back in Britain soon. The horse I'm referring to, of course, Gordon Lord, Byron Graham, he's got top weight in the Eagle Cup. Yeah, he's got various options. Group race at the Curra, Eagle Cup would be interesting. And I think he's still in the Betfred Spring Cup at Haydock a week on Saturday. But there's no doubt that this was a personal best on his 20th run. Easy goer, this horse, when does giving the ground. Giving the ground does seem a big help to him. Bannock ran a blinder, came clear of the rest. But on the inside, for Tom Hogan, and I think, is it Buick on board for the first time? Did Buick ride this horse? Buick was on. I'm going to touch on that angle again. That can't have done any harm. He travels like a dream. He quickens up nicely. This looked an open contest beforehand. Distances were two and three quarters, three and four. He put spaces in a pretty smart field. Yes, there were non-runners like Dimension, but that was a really likeable performance. He's slightly in the twilight zone. As you say, he'll have a really, really well to burden in the Earl Gold Cup. Form says he should come up a bit short in the Haydock race, um, but he's dangerous to oppose when there is plenty of giving the ground. And on his 20th run, a cheap purchase, this horse puts up a career best for Tom Hogan. And they always reckon you need a, a Group 3, or dare I say, a listed racehorse to, to win the Ego Cup, or he fits the bill. Yeah, I, I take your point with the likes of our Jonathan. Others like Hook Either New haven't quite cut it. So it'll be interesting to see what course they plot. There is a potential Group 3 contest, I think, at the Curra. There is the Haydock race, but that was a really good start to the fourth and final day of Ebo week with Gordon Lord Byron Ring for Ireland. Our second race then was the Melrose Handicap. No guarantees, but Mysterious Man impressed in a race run at a demanding gallop. Yes, this is always a high quality handicap. This one was no exception and guarantee wins it and perhaps books a uh, place for the St Ledger. But let's touch on another horse here. It's Mysterious Man. Where is he? He's on the inside, in the noseband, big black horse with the dark body, pale colours. The reason I like this horse is this was definitely a race set up for finishes. The fractions were strong considering the distance of a mile six. And Mysterious Man, now on the rails on the far side, can't quicken, picks up minor money, but he was in the fire of this race way before Guarantee, way before Biographer, and well, well before Cardinal Walter. In the circumstances, I thought he ran an absolute screamer to finish fourth. And lots of people will look at Guarantee, possible ledger horse, biographer, progressing all the time. It may have gone unnoticed, to my mind at least, that Mysterious Man ran a fair bit better than that bare result suggests. And I think, given that he's only rated 83, there's ample scope for him to win a decent handicap. He's a late maturing son of Manduro. That was his mile and three quarter debut. I think that sort of trip will suit him. He's a horse I'll be watching closely these next few weeks. And the Melrose, a horse, a race rather, it's always run at a fast and furious gallop. This year's race, no exception. And I think the first four, including your eye catcher, all came from off the pace. Yes. Hold up rides anyway. Yeah, it was more than three seconds faster than the Ebor, Gordon, uh, which tells the tale of a different rhythm of the race. There will be tons of winners come out of that Melrose. There might even be horses who are better than handicappers. Maybe guarantee will make up into a ledger horse. But I'll be keeping a close eye on Mysterious Man next time. William Buick then continues to make his mark in big races. Here he is at it again, this time in the Lonsdale Cup, and this time another horse that's come from off the pace. There was one massive low for William Buick last week, newfangled, of course, a great loss, but there were various significant highs. And this is a jockey now. He's making all the difference in major, major races. Pick him up on time's up. He had so many chances to put this horse into the fire of a well-run race, and he kept declining them. He kept tucking this horse in behind, tucking him in behind and the consequences that I think first time on times up the partnership blossoms and he beats various horses who've beaten him fair and square in the past what I'm saying is that on Thoughtworthy potentially on Hortensia and certainly on times up this jockey made a massive difference to the final placings in big big races In making that difference though Graham riding at the top of his game it'll be a confidence factor as well Definitely. I mean, he's, he's a jockey in, in demand now. Just a touch on that second in that race, High Jinx ran an absolute belter. Uh, I wonder if connections are ruining the fact that they didn't go for the Ebo. He would have looked well handicapped off 101. But if you look at Buick's performances last week, certainly on Thoughtworthy, he won that race 
under different circumstances, thought Worthy would have been beaten by May Name. Under different circumstances, I think Time's Up may well have been beaten in that race. So he's still a very young man, but he's reached that level now that Ryan Moore got there a while ago, that Fallon's been there, that they can be the difference between victory and defeat in the very best races. We're going to focus now on the Betfred Ebor, Area 51, finished fifth. We're going to focus on this horse who's finished just out of the money in a race going to Frankie for the first time. Yeah, I, I was banged this drum. It's still a real shame that three-year-olds don't get a fair crack of the whip as regards are running this race. But that's by the by. Uh, we featured a big, high-quality field of older handicappers. Not too many um, probable improvers in the race, but let's pick up Area 51. He's about third in the grey, familiar coup cash colours, a steadier rhythm to the Ebor than for the Melrose. But this horse wasn't really bred to shine over this trip, and he ran a belter in the circumstances. He's bang on the speed there. He throws down a strong challenge for the lead, but he can't quite sustain it in the final furlong. He finishes just out of the money, but he runs a belter, and he's only had five runs for Richard Fai. Inside the last, he's still just in front. He's battled his way into a very, very small advantage, but he falters late on as willing foe and Royal Diamond set to slight interference. Frankie wins his first Ebor. Area 51 serves notice that he might be a major force in a mile and a half or even a mile and a quarter handicap this autumn. So a good race with his name on it somewhere down the line. I hope so. Um, if you look at his progression since joining Fahi, it's not been rapid, but it's been steady. That's as good as anything he's achieved so far, and there's the promise of a little bit better to come back at a shorter trip. Next up then, the Rosie Stakes listed, and the question we pose this time is that Fire Eyes, Fire Eyes even, can reignite before much longer. I think so. I think this horse ran an absolute screamer. He came in short on experience on the back of a really impressive maiden win at first. Pick him up here in those maroon Qatar racing colours in the heat of a fast run race. He shows a turn of foot. Look at him. He goes a couple clear here, Gordon. He looks for all the world the likely winner, but he falters late as Hoyam challenges. Hoyam had the best form in this race, and she picks him up late under a really canny waiting Spencer ride. But that burst of speed that Fire Eyes shows in the middle section of that race suggests to me that he's a horse with a bright future. He ran the second furlong, or they ran the second furlong, in 10.57. The third furlong in 11 there. It was a rapid pace in the middle, and he probably paid late on. Next up, we're going to take a look at the nursery. The caption this time, there's a fox on the run. There certainly is. Uh, I don't know whether he's gone unnoticed. He's not an urban fox, more of a rural one. But Dominic Fox, he's back. He's been away, and he's been away a few times. But he's back with a bang at the moment, and thanks to really good support from people like Roger Varian, uh, Noel Quinlan, Alan Bailey, this jockey is smoking right now. There he is on Old Man Clegg for Mick Easterby. On the left, another narrow defeat for Mark Johnson. This time it's salutation. Old Man Clegg gets up under a strong right-hand drive for Dominic Fox, who get this in August, up until today, 42 rides and 12 winners. Fantastic springboard month for him. And look at this. Yeah. He's about to do the Mobot, but you have to choose your moments to do the Mobot. <laughs> and if you run that film on, I don't think we can. What a shame. Oh. Just after that, as he was doing the Mobot, a woman at the side of the paddock unleashed her umbrella. Not a good idea when you're close to horses, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. The horse spooked and the Mobot was spoiled as Dominic came crashing to earth, but it didn't spoil the day for Dominic Fox or his fans. A fantastic August for him. There's a fox on the run. A reduced uh, Ebo festival then, Graham. A vintage one, obviously, with Franco. It must be. Vintage with a capital V. Uh, um, talk about starting the show with a bang. That was sensational on Tuesday, and I'm not saying it got better as the week went on, but it more than held its own. Our final race then uh, was that apprentice uh, handicap Hera winning for uh, William Haggis and Adam Biskitzer. Target man. William Haggis at York, target man full stop, his strike rates are impressive all over the show. Nothing that flash about the race, it was a useful sprint handicap. Herat wins it narrowly under a good ride from Biskitza in the shape hand down colours. But if we touch on the stats here for Haggis, this is the York stats for William Haggis. He is at 15 from 64 in the last five years, 23%. Now, if you compare that with the, the top men in the profession, Sir Michael Stout, 16%. Sir Henry Cecil, 19%, Richard Fahey, 9%, John Gosden, 14%, and Mark Johnson, 
a tepid 6%. I think it will get better now the drainage works better for Braveheart at York and he had a really luckless week last week with various near misses. But if you consider that none of those top trainers can nudge 20% at York and Haggis is at 23% with a really good week last week. Roche du Queen, Guarantee, Herat. It was fantastic for Haggis. He is a real target trainer nowadays. Well, we hope you enjoyed then our uh, reduced York Ebor Festival.